Okay, gang, so this is video is going to serve as our introduction to the tissues. Um, this is just going to lay out a few of the pieces uh, that we want you to kind of explore throughout the unit, and let's jump into it. So, first of all, what is a tissue? So, tissues are collections of cells that, and cell products perform specific limited functions. Okay, that's kind of your textbook definition. Um, the one that I tend to use a little bit more is this one at the bottom here. It's a group of similar cells. So they all look kind of the same, and they work together for a common function. Okay, so that's generally what you find is a tissue, a bunch of cells that look about the same and work together for a common function. So there are four big classes of tissues. You're going to have epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous. So we're going to be starting off by talking about epithelial, and we're going to kind of work our way right through there. Okay. So epithelia, okay, so the epithelia always have this exposed surface. Okay. Now this is a weird phrase for a lot of my students. Exposed surface does not mean it's on the outside of the body, or it doesn't have to mean it's on the outside of the body. Um, it is. Your skin, um, the outer covering of your hair, the outer covering of your cornea, all of those things have epithelial tissue. But um, you also have lots of exposed surfaces throughout your body. So the lining of your digestive tract, the part where the food would actually slide by, that's epithelial. The lining of your blood vessels is epithelial. Uh, the outside of all of your internal organs are actually covered by epithelial. They're like coverings as well. So they're kind of exposed surface, but you can also think of them as kind of linings and coverings. Okay. Some of the other features that you want to know is that they are tightly packed. Okay, so cellularity is this idea that the cells are really, really, really tightly packed. So there's almost no empty space or what we're going to call matrix later on in this between the cells of epithelials. Okay, there is also this idea of polarity. So an epithelial cell typically has a um, apical or exposed surface and a basal surface, the bottom surface, and they're going to look very different. So one of the cells we're going to see in a minute kind of looks like this. Um, it looks like a column, okay, and this is the bottom, and there'll be some connective tissue down here at the bottom, but this top part up here, there will be special little hairs called cilia, right? Uh, so this is going to be a, a tissue called pseudostratified columna, and so this top surface up here looks very different from the bottom surface, so that's where this idea of polarity comes from. The exposed outer edge usually has some sort of special structure that's needed for the outside, right? Uh, they are also always attached uh, to connective tissue. Um, by the way, this is probably the slide where you should be writing the most things of the whole thing, guys. So you want to make sure you're kind of defining these things. So cellularity, tightly packed, almost no space between the cells. Polarity, they got the top and bottom surfaces. Attachment, they always have this basal lamina or basement membrane, which is just connective tissue. Underneath, it's almost like the anchor underneath here. So all this that I drew over in this section over here, that would be the connective tissue underneath. Okay. Uh, the next term on here is avascularity. So avascularity means they're lacking blood vessels. So typically, you don't have very many blood vessels in epithelial tissues at all. And then the last one is regeneration. And regeneration is pretty important. So regeneration just means they have a really high rate of mitosis. Um, and for a couple of reasons. The two main reasons, they don't have a lot of blood vessels. And without a lot of blood vessels, they, the cells don't live very long. And the other part is they're exposed. All right, so if you take those two ideas, uh, think about your skin. You're constantly shedding the epithelial layer of your skin, and you're growing, having to grow new cells to replace it. So here's a diagram of some epithelial cells. Notice they're tightly packed. Notice the top looks very different from the bottom. Looks like, notice there's a layer of connective tissue down on the bottom here. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the features that you'll find in epithelial tissues. In terms of functions, they vary a lot depending on the epithelial tissue. Some are really permeable, some don't uh, have almost no permeability. Uh, some are very protective because they're nice and thick. Some have almost no protection. Uh, so there's, there's a wide, wide range of epithelial tissues. We're only going to be learning four of them this year, uh, but it's, there, there's a wide range depending on the individual tissues. One of the cool things to talk about with epithelial tissues is this idea of cell junctions. Okay? So because the cells are so tightly packed, they have essentially parts where they join to another cell, and that's what we're talking about here. And those junctions where they join um, can have multiple different functions. They can sometimes be like a watertight seal. Uh, so like, for instance, uh, the lining of your digestive tract has a nice watertight seal so that things don't soak in by themselves. We actually choose what we want to uh, take in. Okay? Um, communication allows cells to pass uh, signals back and forth. That's how cells know whether there's damage around them or what kind of chemicals they need. And then there's also other ones that are like 
uh, super strong connections between the cells that are almost like, like super glue holding them together. Okay? So I put down on here, um, it depends on what you need in a certain area, which of these junctions you'd have. So your skin actually has all of these. Your skin has to have a pretty good watertight seal. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So you don't you touch bleach. It doesn't soak right into your body. Um, most of that bleach is kept outside of your body. Um, you have messages going back between back and forth between cells that helps them uh, to know that there's damage. It allows for healing. Okay, and then uh, the super strong connections keep your skin, you know, give your skin its strength, so your skin doesn't rip right off when somebody like pulls on your arm or or something along those lines. All right, so epithelial are usually made based on two things. They're based on shape and number of layers, okay? So shape, we have three big shapes. We have uh, the squamous, the cuboidal, and columnar. And squamous just means they're thin and flat. Cuboidal are cube-shaped, right? Pretty easy. And columnar, they look like columns, right? This part down here is less kind of intuitive. So based on layers, if it's a single layer of cells, it's referred to as simple. I'm not sure where that terminology came from, but that's something we just want to be familiar with. And then if it is a multiple layers, it's stratified. And that should make sense. You've seen things like strata throughout your, your uh, exposure to science and so forth. So it just means kind of layered. So let's show you a couple of pictures of those. So here are squamous, squish cells, cuboidal, cubes, and columnar, column shift. Pretty easy, right? And then here we have stratified layers of all of those. So now there are multiple layers. These are stratified squamous. See these squish cells on the outside? There's lots of layers. You actually name it by the outside portion. So these look like cube at the bottom, but they're named by the outside, those squishes on the outside. These are stratified cuboidal, because you can see stacks of cubes. And then again, columnar, you name it by the outside edge, the exposed edge, so you can see multiple layers. So this would be called stratified columnar. The middle one is stratified cuboidal, and then this one on the left is the stratified squamous. So let's move on to connective tissues for a second. So connective tissues, uh, similar to the other, they have a wide range, right? So sometimes they provide structure, so bone is a connective tissue. Sometimes they store energy, uh, fat and adipose is one. Sometimes they transport materials because blood is one. Um, they generally connect the body, as you would expect with the name connective tissues, so they kind of connect things. Um, but they have no, they're not supposed to have outside contact with the outside world because they're always going to be covered by the epithelial tissues. So what will be really important when you guys learn this is the individual functions of each of the tissues. Uh, so each, uh, each connective tissue will have its own function that you guys are going to be expected to kind of study and learn. Most of them are pretty easy. All right, so connect tissues in general have a few common characteristics. First one, there's usually lots of space between the cells, okay? Um, and that space between the cells is referred to as the matrix. Um, and so the cells themselves, so epithelials were kind of bricks, kind of together like this. Connective tissues, you might have a cell over here, then a cell over here, and a cell over here, and then everything in between, which I'll put in blue here, this is all the matrix between them, okay? And the matrix is made up of two big components. Um, it's got these solid protein fibers, which we're about to see here in a second, and the extracellular fluid, which is called the ground substance. So those are two vocab words that you're going to want to make sure you're familiar with. Actually, three if you include matrix down here. That we're going to make certain stuff. Okay? So all of this in blue over here is the matrix, and it would have two different things. And it would have like strings in here, and then all the fluid that fills up that space would actually be just called the ground substance. So in terms of cells, the only cell that we're going to learn this year, guys, we're going to focus on the fibroblast. So this fibroblast, and that's the cell that makes the fibers, okay? And there's three big fibers we want to know, and you'll see them listed down here, collagen, reticular, and elastic, okay? And they're pretty simple. Collagen is, they're kind of like ropes. They all kind of run in the same direction like this. Um, so picture like a rope all braided together. Um, that's what kind of collagen fibers look like, and they're really strong. Um, that's what your tendons and ligaments are going to be made out of. Um, so I talked about the ropes of the connective tissue there. Okay, the reticular is kind of the same, uh, the same material, but set more as a web. And because it's a web, um, it's better for like surrounding things and tying things together than just like two pieces being tied together end to end. Okay? And then you have elastic fibers, and elastic fibers, as you would expect, can stretch. Okay? Um, so they're allowed to stretch, and then they bounce back into place. So those are the three big fibers, and using those, you can build just about anything you need uh, in your um, connective tissues. All right, so we're moving on to muscular tissue now, muscle tissue, and there's three big types, skeletal, okay, and the most important thing you guys have to know about skeletal is that's the 
voluntary movement. It's not always attached to the skeleton, but anything you can voluntarily or consciously move, that is skeletal muscle. Okay? Cardiac muscle is the easiest one because that's the one that's found in the heart. It is involuntary. You can't consciously say beat faster or beat slower to your heart, so it is involuntary. And then smooth muscle is also involuntary, and it is found um, the walls of hollow internal organs like your blood vessels you'll see on here, bladder, respiratory, digestive tract, reproductive tracts. So all of the muscle contractions that you have no conscious control over other than your heart really are these smooth muscles. So three big categories. Skeletal is your only voluntary. Cardiac is the, the involuntary in your heart. And all of those other involuntary ones like your stomach contracting is going to be made out of smooth muscle. And our last tissue is the nervous tissue or neural tissue. You'll hear it, see it both ways. Okay, and there's two types of cells in there, guys. Uh, it's pretty simple. You got your neurons. Okay, and the neurons are the ones that actually perform electrical communication. They actually send what we call. Oops, sorry. Impulses. Okay, so they send impulses. It's going to be electrical waves we send throughout the body. Okay, uh, the other cells are the neuroglia, and the neuroglia are kind of the supporting cells. They kind of support the neurons, hold them together, they maintain the chemical environment around them, um, the general kind of caretakers of the neurons, so the neurons can do their job. The neurons right, is what controls all your muscle contractions and all your senses and everything really vital to your body, and then the neuroglia kind of take care of those cells to make sure they can do their job. So that's what you're looking at, guys. Um, you are from here, going to come into class, and we're going to kind of talk about these, and so make sure you circle and mark things you're not sure of. And then we will move on into the individual specific types of tissues uh, tomorrow in class. Have a good night.